Uh, good afternoon. This is uh, Friday, and it's a few seconds past uh, 7 o'clock. If you were looking for the weekly broadcast of Ask Welfare Rights, you have been successful, and you have found us. My name is Maureen Taylor. I work with the Michigan Welfare Rights Organization, and once again, I'm here with uh, the national chair of the Welfare Rights Union, uh, Marion Kramer, who's going to give you an official welcome. Marion? Mm -hmm. This is an official welcome. <laughs> Again, we're happy to be here uh, with you on this Friday evening. And we want to remind you that uh, you're listening to one of the best TV stations uh, around um, and have always supported us. And if you're going to participate, and which, which we hope you do, that you will dial in to 868 or 868 zero three five one or with one last number eight six eight four three three six the website in case you are unable to uh, see us uh, you can go to the website which is www.tv33 uh, whpr.com uh, we have a lot to talk about tonight we hope you will call in and participate and remember Get your point over, bring your pencil and your paper, where we don't have to sit back on the phone and wait on you to get, get the information. Again, welcome. All right, Merritt, a couple of things I uh, uh, wanted to share with you. You know, we just uh, 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 passed uh, the July dates, and uh, the uh, rebellion that happened in Detroit uh, was still going on. And uh, lots of discussions in a lot of different places, and I don't know that we said too much about the rebellion and uh, uh, the causes of it, but I see that there are many, many discussions that are going on that are analyzing what was the reason for that rebellion at that time, and are there any similarities between then and now, since this is the 50th anniversary of that. And I think that, um, you know, I used to hear a lot of uh, conversations that factory workers were having and it was the first time that I really realized, I never thought of it or saw it before, that the difference was if you were in the UAW, yeah. you could move to certain parts of the city while others could not. Well, it's not and just... I remember that. Go ahead. Not just the UAW. If you had a, a, a job and you had your badge or what have you, you, you can get on those buses and go on to work. Because uh, particularly with the auto industry, they they did not want to stop that. And so uh, Kavanaugh at that time, that was Mayor Kavanaugh, and all of them was making sure that those auto workers had the opportunity to board those buses and go straight straight into those plants and what have you. So you could see what was important to them, and it was not the 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 uh, whole problem that people were having at that time we had slum landlords mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. people needed uh homes uh we had we had just came off of uh you know the civil rights movement and what have you uh you know and a lot of people had jobs at that time Maureen, mm -hmm. but it was in actuality uh uh stress that was stirring up a lot of stuff in the community uh, harassing folks and what have you. Let me see. That was stop the, stop the R. What was the R? Stop the robbers in Joyce Safe Street. Yeah, and the robbery was, was the police themselves. And so it was a lot of ha uh, uh, police brutality that was taking place. That, at that seemed time. like the thing that started it. it yes. Was the fact uh, that the police were just absolutely uh, brutal. And whatever that was that happened up on 12th Street uh, came down them steps and on to 12th Street itself, and folks said, that's it, that we that that not was another enough. second. Yeah. Now, the people on 12th Street had been harassed several times, several weekends, uh, you know, and they were just at a party celebrating the fact that, you know, some of the folks had got back from Vietnam and all that type of stuff, and some, uh, it was a happy occasion. Here they come again harassing them. So, you know, they sparked that. Uh, people were angry, true enough. Uh, people were, had a right to be angry about the way that we were being treated here in Detroit. So, you know, it was a rebellion. It was not a riot. It was a rebellion. And a lot of the people that were out there in the street were people with jobs. 
Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for waiting, and thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. You're on the air. Uh, hi, Ms. Taylor. Hi, Ms. Kramer. You know what? Um, in terms we can't of, uh, Mr. Uh, Engineer, uh, we're going to need a little bit of a volume boost. Uh, just a second, uh, caller. Uh, try it again. Uh, good evening, Ms. Taylor and Ms. Uh, Kramer. And good evening. Good evening. Okay. You know what? In, in, and it will always be a riot to me. I was 20 mm -hmm. years old when that happened. I wasn't in the ground zero. I lived up on the north end of the street called Harmon. And, but, I mean, you know, from where we were, you could see the... We still you can't see hear you. Uh, on, Mr. I mean. Engineer, hold on just a second. We're going to get right. an adjustment. Uh, Mr. Engineer, can you boost that volume a little bit for us, please? Okay, try it again, sir. Okay, is that All better? right, yes, yes, we can hear you. Thank yes, you so much. Very good. Okay. Go ahead. But anyway, I was 20 years old when that happened. I didn't live at ground zero. We were maybe about a couple of two, three miles from there, but you could see the smoke billowing and, you know, darkening the sky. And, I mean, 12 burned and smoldered for a week, and it was a very viable business community. And as we are sitting right here today talking about this 50th commemoration of the riot, um, Detroit is still suffering some of the ill effects of that riot. And what I mean some of the ill effects is this. We had a disinvestment of people out of the city, and we had a disinvestment of businesses out of the city. Now, things are slowly starting to turn around, but, you know, to try and catch up, and I heard a guy told me one time, he said, ketchup's only good on a hot dog and fries. But, um, you know, we will never get back to what, what, what it once was. And did you read the article in the paper this past, I think it was Sunday, where this uh, police, his guy was a police officer, and he was talking about it'll never, it'll never come back. It'll never be what it once was. And you know what, Miss Taylor, when I read that story, and you know, with all of the harassment by the police and the big four, you know, against black folks, I said I would, I don't care how many people were in the city. I would not want to go back to a time like that. Yes, sir. Okay, to to where you know you're you're harassed, you know, just because you're standing on the street and what have you. Well, do you do you see similarities in terms of what uh, 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 was the environment at that time and what the environment is today? Well, I'll say this in terms of the police now. I mean, it is nowhere near what it was back then. Now, I mean, according to, all right, you know, in terms of, the, you know, what worked and that kind of thing, yeah, well, there's a high rate of unemployment and there's a high rate of poverty. Um, but, you know, in terms of the relation between the, the police and the community, you know, the community police relations, it's good. I mean, but it's never going to be perfect because it's continuing, forever changing uh, kind of, um, and I can't put a name, put a thing on an adjective to describe it, but, you know, as good as, as, good as you want it to get, it can always get better, but it will never get to the point where... You know, what? Because, like I say, it keeps continuing to change. All right. Yeah. Well, Carla, thank you for that observation. And, uh, and uh, 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 it's good to hear someone that was living in the area to see what you think about what was going on at that period of time. So thank you for sharing those thoughts. Okay, and thank you for taking the call. And certainly, go ahead. Mary, what do you think about that? Uh, as far as the similarity between then and now, poverty was still deep. Um, but people were beginning to, uh, you know, acquire some jobs and what have But it was deep, Maureen. Um, and again, with the harassment of the police, there's some great similarities as of today. Uh, too many of our children, uh, right now, kids are getting just brutally murdered, fighting, and, you know, this whole internal yeah. fighting of each other and not knowing who the real, you know, who they should be directing their anger at it should not be between them they should be directing their anger at this very government that's sitting up there their children have the opportunity to get some of the best quality education around and our children have to have to it's like my daughter said yvette said we got to go shopping for education we wow. don't have them in our community no more yeah uh the the uh, uh emergency manager the hand of of the governor and what have you that whole fascist move have removed all our, our good schools and what have you and like you say in detroit you know uh, the board of, I mean, uh, Detroit uh, Education Department was not, uh, didn't have money. 
They had money, and they and had and billions. when and mm-hmm. when and when the uh, emergency first emergency manager when they put that emergency manager in, they start robbing the schools. Yep. Yep. So yeah, the the situation to me is even worse because right. our children are not needed to work no more. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Thank you for waiting, and thank you for calling. Ask welfare rights. You're on the air. Good evening, ladies. And good evening. Good evening. Always a pleasure to see you. Uh, I just want to say that in my observation, it appears to me that the um, that the uh, and I know I'm singing to the choir when I say that say this, but I think the climate is still being set up to start another uh, rebellion. When you have receivership, you you uh, snake over the state snake over receivership over your assets and your your right to vote. Uh, mm-hmm. When you have residency taken That's away right. from you, when you have schools being dismantled, when you have water shut off, when you have there illegal you go. foreclosures mm-hmm. going on, and the list goes on on all these racist policies that's being made, and then uh, to think that the police is on your side is kind of hard to believe when they work for the snakes that make these policies to take. That's so, right. to as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> the lawmakers are the lawbreakers because they're mm-hmm. inhumane and they do things that cause people to be into a rebellion state of mind. Well, caller, uh, caller, let me t- tell me what you think about the fact that the population in Detroit that used to be just under two million now is just over seven hundred thousand, which means more than a million people have left the area in the last 20 years. What do you think? Does that have any bearing on our circumstance today? Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it took a lot. It took more of the tax base away. It took away more economics. Uh, and that's why I, I believe in residency, because if we had our police as our neighbor, we may be treated like human beings and not treated like aliens from outer space. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate that thank point you, of view. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you for calling. See, Marion, that's that's you. You know, at some point we're gonna have to take a look at this. You you know the the exodus that happened in the twenties and thirties that brought African Americans, Latinos, Appalachian whites to that central uh, passage, the Middle Passage, and folks that came to Detroit and Cleveland and Cincinnati and Chicago and Pontiac and all of the factories and the, uh, the slaughterhouses in Chicago and everything, leaving Jim Crow and coming up here. And, you know, all of the folks that were involved in production and, you know, assembly lines, and you just needed so much, so many, so much. And now that this technology uh, that has been creeping in, creeping in, I can still remember Richard Moore having them wonderful parties coming out of Huber Avenue Foundry. And Lynch Road Assembly, what was the name of that bar? That The Lynch Road Bar, the Earl and them, or Jen and yeah, them was, was working, working in. Out. Man, those were some fun days with all those factory workers and all that fun stuff that was going on up there on it Lynch Road. It was really Road, ma- six multinational. Then. Oh, it and was fabulous. Like over you know? there around Lynch Road. Oh, my goodness. Just such a good time. And bit by bit, Huber Avenue closed, and then it didn't open back up, and it always did. Lynch Road Assembly closed for a changeover, and it always reopened, and then one day it never did. And you had Dodge Main closed for a uh, changeover, and then it always reopened, and it never then it didn't. And just one by one, and how difficult it was to look at and see this change in the foundation, the economic foundation of what was happening. And we're thinking, you know, I know I was thinking, all, this is where everybody lived. I thought everybody in America lived the way I lived. My mother and father had a job. Uh, We had uh, money to go down. There was a place called a hyperbole downtown where you could buy a $5 dress, and they were fabulous. It was a little shop, and, man, I loved to go to that place. Uh, All of the fun stuff that I had growing up, and I was stunned (laughs) after I got out of high school and started going to college and people were not living the way I was living. You know, I didn't Maureen, just a lot a of shock. people were not living the way you were living. It was in Detroit. And, and, in Detroit, and we Detroit. were living good. In Detroit, uh, the, uh, a lot of folks, when you go down, when I had to fight those slum landlords, 
and organized again. A lot of people were not living like that because of the mere fact that uh, they were being robbed not only by by the slum landlords and the people that they put over those buildings, but they had forced a lot of those women into prostitution. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, it was hard for, uh, you know, people finally got a home. Mm-hmm. And then you look up at uh, Research Park, Wayne State, it's been rezoned for Wayne State to be able to go over there and begin to uh, start building in the Research Park area mm -hmm. because they had rezoned that area for Research Park as a, as a technical area. Now, the people living in that area said, what are they talking about? We own Somebody our homes. Somebody Trumbull. We own our homes. Now it's more on. It's it's on. Um, it's it's the bend right around off of. Um, people generally know where Research Park is. It's right there off of. Uh, when you're going on 94, it's up at the top there. Research Park is. Is that Trumbull? No, that's not. Yeah, it is Trumbull. Yeah, Trumbull, yeah, yeah, Trumbull. I yeah, had Trumbull to think. Street, yeah. Trumbull Avenue. Just a moment. Research call Park mm -hmm. was being uh, built. Other areas were being built, and people were being the very workers that we talk about were being urban renewal out. Yeah. And if you did not accept what condemnation court said, that was the fair market value for your house, then they turned around and started charging you rent for your home. Call you on the air. Thank you for waiting and thank you for calling. Why Ask welfare rights. Am I on the air? You're on the air, yes. Good afternoon, ladies. Linda Wheeler here from Highland Park, Michigan, reporting for duty. Uh, thank you so very much, ma'am. Uh, uh, we're about sharing a few comments about uh, the rebellion. Uh, 50 year anniversary. Uh, any uh, particular uh, analysis or memories you care to share? There was a memory at that time. We were living on uh, Woodrow Wilson and 12. Ooh wee! Uh huh. Yeah, you, and, uh, you were right. You were right next to the uh, fire pit. <laughs> yes, we were. But you know, we didn't know because we were little children, and our parents shielded us from it. We did, however, see tanks going down the street. Yeah. And I remember my cousins, who were teenage boys at the time, uh, went out there, and they, they didn't come back for a long time. And when they did come in, my grandmother and my mother got on them. Uh, it was a time that I didn't really understand until I became an adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I didn't know, you know. Uh, the nobody, mm -hmm. nobody of knew, it and the reason why it did happen, and it was a rebellion. Yes, and I didn't know that, and I kept hearing for years it was a riot. Uh, General, Major General Marion Kramer, yeah, has requested me to call in about some condolences today. We've had some deaths on McLean Street. Please uh, share that information with us. Yeah, two neighbors. In fact, uh, on each side of my house, on McLean here, uh, Terrence Wilson, he was in his 40s, late 40s. He died just last Thursday. Mm. And Mr. Redding, I'm sorry, I don't know his name. He was 90-plus years old. He died last Friday. Well, the first morning. young man that died at age 40, what, what happened? Do we know? All I know is that he was at home with his mother, and uh, he... Uh, passed out in the restroom. I don't know the nature, but I do know he did have a lot of health issues oh boy. throughout the years. He wasn't a very healthy young man, although he looked, you know, healthy. And the other but person I, was in their 90s? Yes, yes Mr. Redding. Mr. Uh -huh. Ray. All right. Well, he we... uh, was in a nursing home. His, his uh, wife oh. called me. I happened to pick up the phone about 7.30, and I, I knew it was important, you know, calling somebody calling around that time. Well, uh, any homegoing information or details that uh, you're able to share yet? I will share more, but I do know this much that Thursday uh, coming up will be Terrence Wilson's uh, homegoing. Oh, and there's one more as, as well, too. Just last Thursday, Nandi of Nandi's Knowledge Cafe, oh, her yes. husband passed, Dr. Uh, Dandridge. 
Uh, up there on, on Hamilton? No. Yes, on Woodward. On Woodward. Oh, Woodward, yeah. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, he passed, and his uh, homecoming was this was last Thursday at uh, Pi's uh, funeral home. Boy, oh, boy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, any details about home going services, uh, you yes. and anybody else, uh, call in so we can hear it, and maybe we can at least send condolences. Thank you so much. All righty, boy, and, that's and three, in, three in a week. My us. goodness. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Thanks, thanks for, for the tips, okay? You're welcome. All right. Have thank a good you night. so much. Enjoy a great show again, ladies. Thank you so much for keeping the people awoke. And thank you much. Okay. Thank you. All right, now. Caller, you on the air. Thank you for your patience, and thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. Hello? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, Marion was saying, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Research Park. It's called... You know, it's called Trumbull Crossing now. It's called what? Trumbull Crossing. Oh, it's called Trumbull mm -hmm. Crossing. So <laughs> it was Research Park when it opened up. We talk about on Trumbull and Forest. Oh, I really? know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I it's know called what you're talking Trumbull, about. I stay right down Crossing. from it. What are they crossing? Huh? What are they crossing? They crossing their fingers and hoping that you don't remember. That's what they crossing. That's what <laughs> well, you know, they've been, they been changed the name. I didn't They've know been that. changed the name to Trumbull Crossing. My wow. goodness. Uh -huh. You know, well, see, it's good to uh, know some. You know, I remember when Cass Corridor was the Cass Corridor. Oh, that's right. And, right. And, and, and now it's, uh, what do they call it now? Midtown. Uh, Midtown. Midtown. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, you know, that was, it was an artist hub. And people were out there painting on the streets and, and guitars out on the streets and all that kind of stuff going on, and then all uh -huh. of a sudden it's turned into Midtown, and there's no telling okay. with uh, Dan Gilbert purchasing every uh, yes. block there is. Uh, it's probably going to be Gilbertville before it's all over. Yeah, because Midtown is right here, and um, right here, uh, Midtown is right here by Freedom Place. It is know. now. Uh -huh. uh, Carla, thank you for your uh, memory, and thank you for and your yes. new revelation. Yes. Okay. Thank and don't you. forget the, the Virginia Park. Uh, Virginia oh, yeah. Park. What do they call that now? Uh, no, it's still the same. Oh, That's okay. That's on 12th, you know, where, yeah. the, uh, where the rebellion started. Yes. At. Well, but as yes. Dan Gilbert and, and his troops, yeah. uh, with okay, the mayor and, and them thank you so much. further, down, further, right. further up. They'll be uh, changing the name of the Ginger Park. No, they're not. They're not going out of downtown. I can see that. They're gonna stay right downtown. No, they're not. Because they're already in Highland Park. They're going to make select purchases. Yeah. See, the neighborhoods are not going to get any benefit about anything that's going on by these capitalists. Yep. Uh, they. They are on. Thank you, caller. <laughs> All right, uh, 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 some of the other uh, 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 events and whatnot that are going on. And, you know, uh, the current, what's, what was the name of that? The Warren Report did a 20- or 30-year report after the rebellion, and they talked about police brutality. Mm, and what what was it? Well, uh, it was uh, a Warren, Johnson, Warren Report, Johnson, the Kern Report, yeah, the Johnson, Johnson Report. The, no, Johnson, President Johnson. Uh, it was uh, a Jackson Report, wasn't it? No. <laughs> a Smith Report? No, Maureen. Yeah, it was. It was a downtown report, no, and, 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 and you can go crazy reporting about 10 or 12 of them because no. they all got money to do reports. The yes, sit up here. Was the, was the <laughs> current report, um, <laughs> and as they released their de uh, information and what have you, nothing was implemented, really. Well, I, I, can, I can recall over the that years from the Johnson administration. reading things and the analysis and whatnot, but... You know, so many people uh, gained uh, notoriety and uh, uh, financial stability after writing reports about uh, their analysis. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for uh, calling Ask Welfare Rights. You're on the air. Good evening. How are you doing? Uh, fine. Look, look here. First of all, I want to remind the people to make sure they get out and vote on August the 8th. Yes. Don't sit around waiting talking about the general election in November. Get out and vote August the 8th. It's very important. And then also I heard, I haven't seen it myself in the papers or not, but where they're talking about you got people running for mayor that ex felons and all that kind of stuff. I believe People running for mayor that what? That's that, 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 that ex felons or 
felons, what they call Oh, you talking about ex-felons? Yeah. The ex-felons. Is there a rule that ex-felons can't felons, run yeah, for mayor? Crimes and all like that. Committed crimes and all like that. Is, is there a rule? Uh, yeah, is there a rule that is. ex-felons can't run? On what it is. If you didn't kill somebody and rob them and kill them, you shouldn't be running. But you know, I think that's nothing. All these people is running. I never heard of them. Where'd they come from? Well, that's is all the take some votes from Coleman Young Jr. Well, call her. Call her. Let me ask: plan. Is is there a rule that says you can't run for office if you're a felon? To my knowledge, this is my knowledge, I haven't seen where it is, because if it is, all the people downtown and the people in Flint should be fired because they <laughs> so, all that water out there. So, so they, clearly, they, there's no such rule. See, <laughs> I, I hear you. I haven't heard that. <laughs> so I think, I think what they're doing is uh, doing that to just get, uh, get all these people. I never heard of some of these people, so many uh, they just pay to get up there and give them something that, you know, you know. I, I know. Of them. You know. Well, you know, uh, you're not new to know, this. I never heard of that, though. Like I say, all these people that damage, poison that water, including the governor, the should be locked up. They should not be running for nothing. Put them out oh, of office Oh, we agree right with now. you on that. I, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to hang up. I'm but still working well, on them I'll say to you right now, okay, you. you're not new to this. Uh, they're going to run people to try to make sure that Coleman don't make it. So, you know, the thing yeah, is... I'm going to hang up the list. Mm -hmm. Okay. The thing is, is that, uh, you know, you have to keep doing what you're doing and uh, fighting for your candidate and all uh, and to make sure that he wins. So, therefore, uh, you know, I, I agree that you said that people should get out uh, for the upcoming election, because people don't even think that that's very important, but it's one of the most important primary, step, yeah, steps don't, don't, don't to breaking vote. down uh, who's going to be running in November. So get out and vote. you got a lot of crooks running, as they have said, and, and uh, some of them are very famous. Some of them More are... More like infamous. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> like Napoleon and stuff like that. I'm talking about... Uh, he acts like Napoleon. Now, I'm not talking about Napoleon on the... Um, sheriff. Uh, the sheriff. Mm -mm. <laughs> so, you know, uh, folks need to know that they don't need to be sitting back in their houses talking about ain't nothing going to change. No, as long as you say ain't nothing going to change, yeah, you can stay home. <laughs> uh, Carla, you're on the air. Thank you for waiting and thank you for calling. Ask Welfare Rights. You're on the air. Thank you for waiting and thank you for calling. Ask Welfare Rights. You're on the air. And don't forget, I forgot to tell you, I'm still working on your barbecue. Uh, let's move on. Over yeah, here. we just going to move on here. <laughs> Everybody that works over at Parks is going to be retired by the time you get over there again. All right. Uh, uh, Marion, the, uh, the other thing is, now that uh, the 50th anniversary, and I'm certain, you know, because we, we've got this new movie, and that's the Algiers movie, and it looks like it uh, got a pretty big showing. When it came and whatnot, and I don't, you know, looks like there was a lot of people that went to it and wanted to see that particular playwright's concept of what happened uh, during the rebellion of July of 1967. And I see that they're still talking about it, commercials on TV, yeah, they go, and they still bringing other, it back, you know, bringing it back, you know. Spreading out to other theaters yeah. outside of Michigan. Yeah, you know, but uh, this question of uh, police brutality, and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, Jen's picture is over there on Gratiot. Mm -hmm. Somebody painted that. I don't know who did that wonderful portrait of Jen, painting of Jen. And Ron Scott's picture is up there, too. Coleman Young. And, and what I was thinking about is Ron, uh, for years, organized and protested police brutality, the, na the organization that he worked with. And since he's passed on, uh, that organization doesn't seem to be as visible. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to say they're not working, but they're certainly not as visible. But the other thing, all of these thoughts come to me. And we got this young white police officer that got shot, what, a year ago? Yeah. That young man named Colin. And then uh, yesterday they have accused this 61-year-old mentally impaired man mm -hmm. have the same fingerprints and, and evidence and wouldn't, whatnot. It looks like he is the one that shot that young police officer. And now the story is leaking out.
that this black man, his case was closed at the welfare department for failure to turn in some kind of paperwork. He couldn't get his medicines. He had been off of them for three months, Mary. And I'm so sick of hearing this. Three months he was unable to get his psychotropic medications because his welfare case was closed. And as he sunk deeper and deeper into delusions, mm -hmm. now he's not even able to stand trial because they put him through several psychiatric tests mm -hmm. and he has p uh, failed every one of them. The man is too delusional to even stand, uh, to even go to court. And so you try to take a look and see who's responsible for the death of that young police officer. And it's not, it's only not that, that guy. It's, it's that not. welfare system, here, that here government that won't fix it, help here we, people. Here oh. we have a young police no. officer that has been shot like and killed. Kid. But at the same time, and I, you know, I, my, uh, you know, our thoughts goes out to the, the family years old. and and the people, you know, that was his friends and everything. But Ugh. then on the other hand, the government, because of the action of the government out here, that's right. The government out here, and that 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 nut that's at the helm in Washington D.C., folks don't even have uh, medical care, uh, and not gonna have medical care because he don't think that we are worthy enough in essence. And you have a young man walking around here. They know that he was mentally ill. They that man had been sick, sick for, for long years. years. And, and they knew it. And they you know? knew it. But yet and still, they didn't make sure he was not off the street and being treated, you know, the right way in order for him to all, in order uh, to survive. And that young man, that young police officer would have been alive if we had a society that put people first. And cared for folks. I mean, how many times have we heard this story? You, you know, somebody got shot and killed, a mama here, daddy there, grandparent. Look at the 14 and, you know, child this morning. Well, I'm not, I ain't talking about that. Oh I'm talking God. about... The, the number of people that you and I are aware of that by the time we do the investigation to find out why uh, this person got killed. I remember the, the little, the little uh, black woman, the police officer in New York, that the guy walked up behind her, and she's in a police car with her partner, and the man walked up and shot her in the head. Mm -hmm. And that was a month and a half ago. And now here comes the story. This guy... After seven years of being on psychotropic medication, oh, same no. story again, seven years, and something happened, his case got closed, he's got a girlfriend, the girlfriend is saying he's been really working well and, 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 and you know, just uh, got a job and got an apartment and, you know, going to school, his life is uh, just turned around, something happened, failure to locate. Welfare department steps in. You can't get your medicine because uh, 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 we can't find you. So they cut a man's medical case off because they didn't know where he was. I mean, it's just insane. And then he goes into delusions, and the girlfriend wrote the story. He was going deeper and deeper into hallucinations until that day. Over two weeks period of time, he went somewhere, got a gun, and walked up on this police officer and shot this woman in the back of the head with three kids. And then he was shot. Now, who did that? Who and killed we, that woman? Well, we know who killed the woman. Yeah. And that, that's her own, the boss of the woman. And that was the, the uh, government again. Mm -mm. And people won't step, sit back and, well, it ain't the government fault. Now, yeah, oh, yes, it is. It is the government fault for you living. And, and land, a lot of you right now sitting in your home. Wondering. Very, very, and fearful of the fact that you might be losing your home next month because oh, of yeah. these high property taxes that are going on. And the oh, fact, boy. I mean, it's over and over again. They make us poor people pay for society, and they take more and more from us mm -hmm. and say it's our fault. When you, you know, it's I, just, it's just it, it is sickening the way folks sit up and and um, just take this stuff you just know not only take it maureen but believe it believe you know, it. You know people you you referenced this 14 year old young lady uh oh teenager God, that got morning. shot and her 17 year old brother apparently was in a critical condition fighting for his life and that was a drive-by shooting 
another drive-by shooting on Waltham Street, and I know that street very well, and every day, the first thing you can see on Channel 2, Channel 4, and Channel 7 yeah. is somebody that got shot and killed. Most of the time, they're at a gas station. Mm -hmm. You know, because how long we've been preaching, don't go to these gas stations at night, for God's sake, leave them alone, until we can get the community engaged and involved in trying to stop some of this carnage that's going on outside. But uh, a 14-year-old young lady, uh, uh, I guess say Navarre, she looks so cute. She was she just girl. such a beautiful young girl. You know, uh, Carla, you're on the air. Thank you for uh, waiting, and thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. Good uh, evening to two of my favorite goddesses. And thank you, sir. Detroit, Ham, uh, Ham Trimming Island Park. <laughs> That's right. You know, um, speaking of the reporting, uh, and the actual incidents of crime, quote unquote, murder in Detroit. Yeah. What What makes us think that a lot of these incidents are not as they seem? That they were created by entities outside of our community to destroy it. I mean, uh, if, if, if entities that are still amongst us could tire and feather us, castrate us, hang us, drag us behind trucks, and all number of things, it's not beyond them to create uh, incidents like what happened to the 14-year-old girl. By the way, there's reports out there that over 70% of crimes are never solved. So we don't know who did it. Never even solved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't know. You know, so, caller, uh, you're, you're making a, a valid point, but I, I, I'll ask you to comment on what I'm getting, this question I'm about to ask you, okay? Okay. What is it that drives communities to turn on each other. At the, uh, the school where I work, if one kid walks past another kid and they belong to different, uh, quote, quote, tribes of friends, yeah. and this one will look at the other one in a, quote, quote, funny way, whatever that means, and the reaction to just a glance, the reaction to just a bump, means that one or the other has to be physically injured. Where do you think that comes from? First of all, uh, sister, the, uh, the devastation and the uh, conditions in our community, it's like a goulash. There are numerous uh, factions and ingredients put into that pot to create uh, the meals that, the community is served, if I could be kind of poetic. What you just described is part of social conditioning. It's youngsters, um, because of their, 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 first of all, they're the sum of their existence. Whatever they've been going through, whatever they observed, whatever, however they've been treated, all of it, if they haven't known anything else, this is what they're going to do. This is, this is their social conditioning, and I, I, I can't believe that it's not worse. You know, I cannot believe that it's not worse, and it's the people who run this society, so quote, unquote, they constantly come up with uh, strategies mm -hmm. to Great. overwhelm us with all kind of stuff. You know what? We are so amazing, the people, though, because we should have been no broke down yesterday at least. For sure. You know what I'm saying? The overwhelming things that we have to uh, uh, observe, see, experience, it, you know, most we still alive. most uh, cultures wouldn't be able to do that. It reminds me to, and I'll just say this briefly, there's an African um, saying that states that when the community doesn't own its land, the youth turn into lunatics and look at what's happening in our community here in Detroit in particular. A huge black community, and we don't own the land, the stores, the gas stations, or nothing. 
and the youth are impacted by that reality in a really, really, really bad way. Uh, Carla, thank you so much for sharing that point of view. I think that Marion and I both find many, many words that you've shared that we agree. So uh, 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 let's continue thank to not just there. analyze uh, if it. If I wasn't here, it would be worse. Hey, listen, we're going to have to fix it, okay? All right. And thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you. Carla, you're on the air. We're down to our last 15 minutes. Go. Okay. I agree with the last caller. It is my belief that we're being set up into a lab rat environment. And so when they do what they do to cause these reactions and we're not understanding that we are all in this war where they do the mass poisoning, which turns our brains into mental health issues, uh, mental dysfunctional issues. And so we are stuck in a situation to turn on each other. And the, I do think the a resolution or the, uh, the resolve this is for us to be educated and on guard against the real enemy and stop being conditioned to believe that the enemy is us, to be constantly divided and uh, destroying each other when we need to help to build one another so that we together can fight the real enemy. Thank you for taking my time. And thank, thank you so you much. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Mary, say something about uh, uh, um, Detroit Central Cities and what we saw, uh, these psychiatric cases. God. You know, if the government, oh, front. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm going to keep saying this until y'all get it in your head. If the government, if the order of, order of priority was to make sure that we had a decent and affordable li livelihood out here, meaning in the communities there would be recreation facilities, swimming pools, and all that type of stuff for children to engage uh, in and enjoy and be happy with people in the community. Schools. Uh, if mm -hmm. there were schools that cared about our children, instead of, you know, separating the schools over here, you got a, uh, this is school is a better school. This is all the schools should be up at the at the top ranking uh, for for the community to be able to progress. When you look at all the stuff that there was happening in the community now, we don't have nothing, nothing. We do barely have our homes. And you can't hardly make every month you be sitting down, I'm going to pay this bill, I'm going to pay this. They want us to be that way because they don't need us. See, over and over again, we've telling y'all. Don't believe it, though. They yeah. don't need us to work the way they used to. The name of the game is technology. If, if technology was owned by the masses of people, you know, and what have you, I'm talking about for the benefit of society, mm. we wouldn't be going through this. You know, so you know, you better be glad. You better begin to understand what we are facing out here. The, if the government loved us, they'd be working for us, and not these corporations that don't even pay their water bills. Yeah. Marie, don't yeah. even pay their water. But they fight one another to try to get to the point that they are uh, the entity that will end up owning them and pumping the and pump going through these pipelines and what have you at our expense. And if we get in the way, they find a way to get us out of the way. I got a uh, uh, email message today from uh, Jim Fight. Uh -huh. And I had sent him a message and I copied it to you. And he was asking me if As I an knew old friend of ours. Uh, if I knew the name of this company that this is in Baltimore, who is having a series of meetings with the Baltimore City Council. The mayor already a little black girl, she's opposed to this. But the, the city council in Baltimore has invited this corporation mm -hmm. in to talk about so managing crazy. their water department. And he couldn't remember the name of it. It just started with the letter V. That's Veolia. Oh, Veolia yeah, is back again. One. We know it back they're again. Back again. Back again. Well, the first time that they've been to uh, Baltimore to talk about taking over their yeah. water. So I hurry up and uh, hurried up and sent him a message. But, uh, you know, Mary, part of the frustration that we have in welfare rights all the time across the country is how many times do we have to go, how many times we have to be beat up? by the same set of circumstances and we just look like we can't we can't see past 
whatever the crisis is that keeps being the same crisis, the same crisis, the same crisis, and to move ahead. Now, we got this insane person in Washington, D.C., who said the other day, listen, the uh, the police need to start roughing up prisoners. <laughs> okay, the police across the nation said, wait a minute, we're not going to do that. Now, all of them, I'm sure, didn't say that. Not right. Okay, so I'm sure there's a whole bunch of them that said, hey, you know, the president says it's all right, so we go they ahead. You know he's a nut. You know? Then you got, uh, uh, he come back again, and he says there all of this affirmative action stuff that's been benefiting people of color, women and, and, and uh, uh, African Americans and Latinos and, and Native Americans and whatnot is too much because white men are being segregated against. And now we have to turn the clock back because too many white men are being passed over uh, because of all of these previous practices. And I listened to that, and I thought, only thing I could think of is John McCain. And people were just stunned when John McCain put his thumb down on that uh, vote for health care. And I wonder why he did that, and he's a Republican, and why did he? All I can remember, see, people got to connect the dots. You remember when Trump said, John McCain is a hero because he got captured. I like soldiers that don't get captured. He ain't a hero to me. Boyfriend must have heard that and remembered it. And on the day that he needed to do something, he come back from his cancer treatment That's to right. say no. Same thing with Romney. You remember? Yeah. They, that, that, that the president invited George Romney why don't you come to Mar-a-Lago or whatever they were, and let's have dinner together and so I can talk about a possible cabinet position for you after Romney didn't say this and said this and said this. And, oh, by the way, uh, uh, when you get there, uh, uh, it would be nice if you paid for our dinner. So here come Romney thinking he going to get selected. Walking up into the restaurant, and the water cost $84 a sip, and sent him in there and punked him right on out. Five or $600 for lunch, and said, well, thank you so very much for coming, and sent him on out of there and never spoke to him again. Punked out. So here we got this president who says ugly things about women, grab them by the whatever, who disavowed and just disrespected the homeless, I'm not the homeless, but the, the disabled man, said all of these, quote, quote, immigrants that are coming into the country from Mexico are rapists and killers. And now somebody has leaked the telephone call mm -hmm. that he had with the Mexican president. And he's telling the Mexican president, look, you got to stop talking about how you're not going to pay for the wall because it makes me look bad. And, and I need you to just don't talk about it at all. The Mexican president said, look, I don't care. We got to talk about it never. Just as long as you understand we're not paying for nothing. That's right. and, 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 and Trump punked, not used to being punked. And now every time, every single day, all of these things that keep coming up, and the last shoe is going to drop, Marion, when these coal miners oh get this message that that white lung uh, oh. treatment and that black, black lung, lung treatment is going to not work for you anymore. You're not going to be able to yesterday. have it. And I felt, God, I feel I so said, sorry oh for him when that God. message show up. What You're going to be on your own. That's right. You're going to be on your own because he's not going to come to uh, to your rescue. Mm -mm, um, mm -mm, Maureen... Mm -mm. The other thing is that someone mm. brought up uh, on, I think on MSNBC, that why is it that uh, it's constantly this whole thing with Russia now, you know? and uh, Fake news, that's what the president uh, calls uh, it. And he claims this fake, no, it ain't fake news. It's, it's, it's the real news because of the fact that it's some kind of agreement they got between one another. This is about money. money. It's about money. That's all of it is. It's about money. And being able to uh, do, uh, go and, and uh, dig holes wherever they want to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're trying their best to uh, be able to do 
uh, to do, use Russia and everything else to look like they're against one another. I'm talking about uh, the head of Russia and Putin. and and, and uh, this nut here. But they, 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 this all this was planned because the person that was talking about it the other day said, look at who was on this cabinet. Everybody that have had some contact uh, uh, with Russia in the past. So this was a planned thing for them to come in and try to take our mind on what's what the people said. They're not concerned about Russia and all that type of stuff. Russia ain't concerned about us neither. But at the same time, what what's happening is they are concerned about their pocketbooks. This is about their trying to expose uh, the president's financial dealings. That's and they're all. doing everything they can to uh, not let and that you know, information come out. But this is always about the money. Money, honey. Always about the, the resources, about those profits, you know. Um, we got this, uh, and we'll leave a few copies down here. Um there's a, a, a newsletter uh, uh, that's called The Other Side. And one of the trending era, uh, articles, Miriam, is uh, what about this Detroit Free Press story? And it's been about three, about three weeks now that talks about the research done by a local level one trauma center which has connected the shutoffs of water yes. at residential homes to various health issues and health risks. Folks can sit back if they want to. Uh-huh. Stagnant water. Now, see, this is a scientific principle, and everybody who's listening to us already knows this. Stagnant water in the pipes can be a fertile environment for different kinds of infectious things to grow. The water shut off. Is at the bottom part of the pipe. Mm -hmm. It don't work for two weeks or three weeks or five days, whatever it is. And certain kinds of bacteria Sit begin to develop in those pipes where the water's not running constantly to flush it out. And then you go get uh, some Kool-Aid. You go fill up your container and put some red Kool-Aid in there and some sugar and shake it up. And first you give some to Grandma. And Grandma start getting a stomach ache. You know, Grandma, what's wrong with you? We don't know. You give it to your kids. And they stomachs start hurting, diarrhea yeah, and all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, they go to school and, you know, uh, they got whatever this condition is. And, of course, they play together. And several other people started to get sick. And it's not a big thing because it just looks like a little cold. looks like just a little, a little virus or something, and it goes away. And nobody is the wiser that this is all set up because you've got a condition in your household based on not having water. And, and, and who's at fault? Nobody can hear is you. It, you got to sit up. Who you, you is know? at fault? Is it that family? Who's at fault? Well, Marie? see, uh, uh, it's already draconian to turn off water at a you home should not be where there are men off. and women and children, disabled, the elderly, all this kind of stuff. And uh, again, you have your dog. And your dog goes without water, and your neighbors start noticing that you're not giving your daughter fresh, clean water. They're going to call the police. They're going to call the police. They're going to call the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, the Cub Scouts, uh, the Taliban. Uh, They're going to call Homeland Security, the Canadians, the Cubans. Everybody going to be called. And your face, uh, any kind of traffic ticket you may have ever gotten in your life, everything about you is going to be exposed. And if you don't believe it, Go look up this story about this guy named Michael Vick, who was uh, uh, fighting dogs and the kind of things that happened to him. And speaking of Michael Vick, Mary, we're down to about three minutes. One of my other favorite stories is Colin Kaepernick, the uh, 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 quarterback of the uh, uh, 49ers, who took a knee as opposed to standing up during the national anthem. And because he took that position, and I'm not going to respect this song right now because of the terrible things that are happening to people of color across the country. And because of that, he's not working. Nobody will pick him up in the, in the NFL. I saw it. And Ray Lewis, that rat, yeah, he should have just been quiet. You know, uh, 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 Muhammad Ali, all these people that were fighting out here for – for equality and whatnot, bunk them. So we got a guy that says we, we should pay attention to this. But what does that have to do with him not being picked up? 
What we're talking about is folks say uh, this may have something to do with our money. And so we are not going to hire you to be a second or third string quarterback. Get that yeah, something. And then, you know, on, 2017. On, um, Ooh, on the radio, they were saying, should uh, black people support uh, the NFL? I said, black people should people, period, support them. Yeah, Hell they no. just black people. Did anybody? Don't support you know? them. If they That's do that terrible. to him, they can do it to you. That's terrible, terrible. All right, Mary, we got two dates coming up, uh, September 5th, September 6th. We're down to our last minute and a half. You want to say something about these two dates? You want me to say something about the 5th? Yeah, go on. September the 5th is coming up, and that's on a Tuesday. We've got a special guest, sec- yeah. 5, yeah. yeah. That's on a Tuesday. And at Wayne County Community College, about 6 o'clock that evening, uh, there's a special guest coming to Detroit. For those of you that don't know him, you might want to look it up on your Internet, the Reverend Dr. William Barber of the Moral yeah, Mondays uh, uh, activities and demonstrations that are going on down in the Carolinas will be uh, in Detroit for a couple of days and is going to have a public speaking engagement on that Tuesday night about 6 o'clock at Wayne County Community College uh, that evening on 4th Street, and that's that Tuesday, September the 5th. Now, on Wednesday, uh, September the 6th, what's coming up at the African American Museum, Marion, that same night, 6 o'clock? That will be uh, the celebration of General Baker's birthday. Uh, people have always have been coming together since he, his death and said they'd like to come together and find out what's going on and what should happen. And on that particular night, we will have Reverend Barber also. We will have Reverend uh, Pinkney is coming in also. We will have Maureen Taylor on, on the podium. We will have uh, Reverend uh, uh, Liz uh, Thea Harris on the podium. Uh, and I'm trying to think who else. Others that will be on the podium. Come out. It. We got a couple more. Come time. on out and enjoy African American Museum and Six understand o'clock. why we are coming together. Hey, look who's here. Thank you. That's our first engineer. All right, uh, Marion, you have ten seconds to say good night. Good night. Oh, well, that was fast. All right, uh, there are bumpers all over I-94. Bumpers all over I-96. Bumpers all over the lodge. You all need to slow down and leave some space behind your car. Uh, Lord willing and the creek don't rise, we will be back next Friday, and we will see you then. Goodbye. Let's hope the creek don't rise.